The fall and Halloween are probably one of my favorite times of the year. Candy? Costumes? Man, who doesn't like that? Halloween especially is like the last hurrah before everyone goes into hibernation. Eat lots of candy, dress up! Hibernate. Inevitably, Halloween always gets me thinking about creepy things, and that got me thinking about creepy things in video games. And I'm not just talking about jump scares, I'm talking about things that'll make you think. Things that'll make you paranoid, or even ponder, or double take over something you've just heard or seen. So I think it's time we start looking at some creepy things in video games. Let's get started. Top 10 Creepy Easter Eggs in Video Games Doom is a game. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Doom is actually a game series I have a personal history with. I can distinctly recall playing this game on old DOS systems when I was about 6 or 7 years old. Should I have been playing this game when I was 6 or 7 years old? No! Definitely not! In fact, I'm pretty sure it gave me nightmares, which is pretty silly by today's standards because this is what the game looks like. Suspend your disbelief for a second and imagine yourself as a kid back in the 90s. This game was actually pretty scary. There were some really horrific monster designs, and don't forget the fact that this was a pretty new game concept for its time. Nobody had done something like this before, so it was an entirely new experience for its time. Back on track, however, there's a lot of good easter eggs in this game series. One of the creepier and more popular easter eggs has to come from the Doom 3 series. In it, there is a mirror. Gripping stuff, I know. Later, after the Hellspawn has been released, you want to go back to this bathroom and look into the mirror. You'll find something is a bit off with a mirror this time around. Is there something in my teeth? Capcom games have really gone downhill. What is this turkey punch again? My favorite creepy Easter egg from the Doom series has to be from Doom 2, though. In the final level titled Icon of Sin, you'll hear a low pitched grumbling. <laughs> This is actually John Romero himself telling you that you have to kill him to beat the game. Except, he's not really anywhere to be found. So there was a lot of confusion about this for a long time. Eventually it was found out that in order to see John Romero, you had to actually cheat at the game. By typing in the code ID clip, you would turn on no clipping mode, thus allowing you to go through all the walls. Naturally, you'd want to walk into the Icon of Sin, and those who did were greeted by something pretty disturbing. Because John Romero's head would be on a spike behind the wall. I always thought that that was pretty creepy on its own, but just wait until you hear what he sounds like when he gets hurt. Black and White 2. Wonderful, yeah! Black and White definitely goes down as one of my favorite god games ever created. I have talked about this game in the past before, so for the sake of sounding redundant, I'm only gonna talk about this game a little bit. Black and White 2 is generally a pretty laid back game. Most of the time, you're just kinda kicking back and watching your city evolve on its own. Some people might find that kind of boring, but I find it pretty fun. What I don't find fun, though, is that the game actually data mines your computer for something very specific. And that's kind of important because it plays into the creepy factor. Occasionally, when a citizen of your city dies, sometimes you'll hear a whisper that goes like this. Essentially, it's just telling you that someone died. What it's not telling you is that it actually data mined your computer and it was looking for your name. So every once in a while, when a citizen of your city dies, it doesn't whisper death. It whispers your name. I tried to make it say my name, but unfortunately I don't think my name was among the choices. It actually has a pretty hefty list of common names that it could potentially say. So imagine yourself playing this game well into the night with the only light being the computer monitor shining onto you. And imagine if the game said your name. Yeah. That's not my name! We're on a room, down the hall! <laughs> Star Fox! He's a fox! Ha! <laughs> Barrel roll! If there's one thing I figured out about Star Fox, it's that I'm very, very not good at it. In fact, I don't even know how many times I died trying to get this little secret. But speaking of secrets, there happens to be a pretty spooky easter egg in this game. Go figure. The creepiness factor is highly debatable, but I'm gonna do it anyway. The first step is to pick the third row level progression where you start in Corneria, move on to the asteroid field, and then Fortuna. The objective here is to get to the second level, so beat the first level. I won't let you down, Captain! 
Okay, here we go, round two. I got this, I got this. Can, can, can we fast forward past this? Stage two, it's an asteroid field. Wait. This is the level where the Easter egg takes place. What you're trying to do is trigger a special event, so keep your eye out for two large asteroids. Throughout the stage, you'll pass many and they'll look pretty identical, but these two are pretty distinct and much bigger. The first one's gonna be on the left and the second one on the right. To trigger the event, shoot the one on the right until it explodes. If you do it correctly, some sort of weird bird-like enemy will spawn and fly towards the screen. Go against your intuition and fly into it. A really strange event will occur and you'll be teleported out of the level. You're then sent back out to the map screen where some mysterious music will start to play. You're also forcibly sent to an unmarked level, which is later referred to as out of this dimension. You're sent to this really strange level where a lot of random events will occur. The weirdest part has to be the fact that all of the planets and moons seem to have really weird faces. It kinda seems like Star Fox dropped a lot of LSD and decided to go flying, because there's a lot of really weird things that happen. Now this is kinda the part that I'm thinking is debatable, because the music that's actually playing is pretty campy. And it's not necessarily intentionally being creepy. Further debate could be had because you essentially play a slot machine for the second half of this level, so if you like gambling, that's gonna be fun. But I think the creepiest part of this is that there is one final realization to be had. What you have to do is basically play the slot machines until you die or get 777. After you get that, letters spell out the end. From then on out, you're endlessly flying through space. There is no real end to the game. Even before the level starts, the text is indicating that Star Fox is gone. The implications of this point to the idea that Star Fox is eternally lost. You either fly endlessly or die. And there's something a little unsettling about that. Five Nights at Freddy's is not typically the type of game I would play. I don't generally like horror games. But if you don't know what it is by now, it's a game that takes place in a Chuck E. Cheese-esque restaurant. You're the nighttime security, but there is a twist. The animatronic animals get up and walk around, and if they catch you, you die. So it's your job to conserve power and use it only when necessary to keep yourself alive. As much as I enjoy the dichotomy between this and other horror games, namely the fact that you are stuck in the same area instead of having to move around yourself, that doesn't change the fact that this game is actually pretty creepy, albeit a bit short. Plus, there's a pretty spooky easter egg in this game if you know where to look. It's quite an easy easter egg to trigger, in fact you might have already seen it. It is, however, most common on the first night. So start up a new game and start playing on the first night. If you go to room 2B, in the bottom left, you'll see a poster of Freddy. It looks like an ordinary poster, but it actually has a dark secret. Occasionally, if you go to this room, Freddy will have changed to a golden Freddy with no eyes and a creepy smile. And you'll hear this laugh. I think the creepiest part is the moment you bring down your camera. I find the most impressionable part of this easter egg to be the fact that it crashes your game completely, leaving you silently on your desktop, pondering what happened. Sonic the Hedgehog is probably the last place you'd go looking for creepy easter eggs. Well, unless you're playing Sonic.exe. Um, what is happening? Uh, hello? Sonic, is that you? This place is really creepy, man. However creepy that is, it is supposed to be creepy because it is based off a of creepypasta, and I've now said creepy way too many times. But what about when it comes to real Sonic games? Is there any slightly scary things in those? Well, yeah! In Sonic CD, if you go to the time attack mode and play the special stages and get a cumulative time under 4 minutes, you'll actually unlock the sound test mode. There's actually a lot of secrets in these sound test settings if you put in the proper combinations. Putting in 12.11 will get you a secret screen cap saying, see you in the next game, with a picture of Tails. Attempting 4.21 gets you this Sonic still that's very reminiscent of something Batman-ish. You can also get this cute still of Sonic by inputting the numbers 11.9. 32 and 8 will net you this screen cap that appears to be an unfinished level design concept. You can also unlock this special stage where you play as Tails. Aw yeah, Tails baby! It's really hard to control though. Also, Dr. Eggman is watching you. That's weird. 
If you were adamant enough, you would eventually stumble onto 1225. You'll get this really spooky still of a Sonic that's repeating with a deformed face. There's also a Japanese message, and when translated, only adds to how spooky this really is. The translation reads, Infinite Fun, Sega Enterprises, Image by Majin, which if you research this Japanese term stands for devil, which means this screen cap is signed by the devil himself. Now obviously this is a hoax that the Sonic developers put in the game, but try to imagine yourself as a kid once again and stumbling upon this. It's spoopy. The Grand Theft Auto series has always had a bunch of easter eggs. As somewhat of a comedic series, it tends to parody real life situations a lot, like the fact that it incorporates Bigfoot in its games, or even aliens. With all those easter eggs, there's bound to be a few spooky ones out there. Like in Grand Theft Auto 4, you can actually see the heart of the city, which is represented by a real heart that's chained up. As creepy as that could potentially be, I think the most disturbing easter egg is actually the ghost easter egg from Grand Theft Auto 5. The tone and feel of this one is just a little bit darker. So it's time to grab a plane and fly over to the northeastern side of Los Santos. In my experience, it's always best to do these types of things in style. <laughs> Alright, we're here! Step 1, don't get mauled by a cougar. Ah. Step 2, go back! Step 3, parachuting! We did it! Ow! Now that we're here, this is actually the part of the map that you're looking for. It's in the northeastern section of Los Santos, and it's called Mount Gordo. This right here is the bend in the path that you're looking for. This event is only triggered at 11 o'clock at night, so it looks like I've got some time to kill. Step 4, murder! Once the clock strikes 11, look at this cliffside facing the coastline. If you're there at the proper time, you'll find an image of a ghost hovering over the cliffside. The closer you get, the more she disappears but you can always see her through the scope on your sniper rifle. There also happens to be a name that appears in blood on the cliffside, and the name appears to be Jock. There's also a page on the in-game internet referencing this quote-unquote accident. In it, you can actually see that the victim's husband's name was Jock, subtly referencing that she was killed by her husband. And this just so happens to be the same Jock that is running for governor. Psychonauts has to be one of the best games I've never played. Well, that is until now. I didn't really know what I was missing out on. It's a really quirky, silly, and unique game where you collect a lot of things. And shoot lasers with your mind! Pew! Nothing can stop my psychic reign of terror. I'm stuck. The story is actually pretty great, starting you off at a boot camp where you'll train in your psychic abilities. The way you do this, however, is by going into the minds of your instructors, creating this almost dreamlike alternate dimension where you run around and solve puzzles. When you're exploring the minds of other people, you can collect certain things, like baggage. Most importantly, for this easter egg, you can break into certain vaults that contain memories. Once you bust them open, the memories are presented to you in this really cutesy style that's supposed to invest you emotionally by showing you a slideshow. The memories themselves serve as a backdrop for the characters. They can be really sad stories, or they can be really happy stories. A little ways into the game, you'll find yourself talking to Agent Mila Vadello. It's her job to teach you the psychic technique Levitate, and she does so by bringing you into her mind. At about the halfway point, the level starts to get a lot more vertical. And if you're paying close attention, you can see that there's this room off to the side. Once you're there, go into this side room and break into this now chest. You definitely don't want to go in there. That's a party killer right there. Some people have pretty terrible memories that they lock away, even in real life, and this happens to be one of Mila's. So naturally, let's jump inside! Creepy aesthetics aside, you can find out that this is not actually just a nightmare. Right before you jump down into the chest, you can find a locked memory vault. Inside is a slideshow titled Mila's Children, in which it implies that Mila was a caretaker at an orphanage. However, it seems to take a turn for the worse as the orphanage burns to the ground and shows Mila being tormented by the memories of burning children. And things now make a little bit more sense. Help us, Mila! Mila, where are you? Save us. 
in the past, I lost countless hours to World of Warcraft. Now so much has changed, I can barely figure anything out, and I'd probably want to start over. Regardless, I think this game tops the best MMO list for me. And the best part is, there's some pretty creepy stuff in this game. One of the more interesting easter eggs is that you can hear remnants of the past while traveling through Undercity. At really specific points, if you turn up your ambient volume, you can hear Arthas' return. The first part being the bells. Next, you can hear the crowd cheering for his return. And finally, you can hear the last conversation he had with his father before killing him. Another thing that's really cool is this unfinished section of the game called the Karazhan Crypts that people have glitched their way into. In it, you can see piles of bones almost as high as the ceiling, and if you decide to swim underwater, you'll see tons of corpses that have drowned. Though creepy, it's not technically something people are supposed to see. There is another creepy easter egg that takes place early on in the game. For this, you probably want to be on the Alliance side and create a human. Play through the initial stages if you want, but the goal here is to get to Goldshire. Once you're there, become a wisp. I mean, go to sleep. Because technically this event starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I say technically because I think the rules for this event have changed a little bit. In the northeastern section of Goldshire, you'll find this house that has leatherworking trainers inside. If you go to the second floor and go inside the room, you'll find that all your music cuts out and starts playing this ominous tone. This room becomes important later on. The reason you have to wake up at 7am is because a special event will trigger and six children will spawn. Well, at least they're supposed to. I actually looked around for an hour and couldn't find them. Go back to sleep. Come back. Die a little inside because they're still not there. Cry! <laughs> okay, so technically I think a few things have changed. What's supposed to happen is these children will walk from location to location. It all seems pretty harmless until you realize they're in a pentagram-like shape. You also might occasionally hear weird things when you follow them. And this all culminates back at the room where it seems like they're doing some sort of... ceremony. And that's when you can start hearing some really creepy things. Your friends will abandon you. You will die. I did eventually see the children for myself, but I think it's broken because they didn't move at all. So this might go down as one of the creepiest easter eggs that used to be in WoW. Let's talk Animal Crossing. Generally, it's a pretty laid back and happy experience. Most of the time, you're just doing a set of chores for your neighbors in order to collect as many things as possible, make money, and make some friends with the sentient animals living in your town. This is my new town, and I named it Buttland. I'm 25. I probably got the worst layout a town could ever get, with the bridges being on the north side and south side, so that means anytime I want to do anything, I have to go all the way around. The game was probably punishing me for being so juvenile. I actually got a few good neighbors in my town, I think my favorite one has to be Oxford. He's kind of a dick. There's always been a lot of easter eggs in Animal Crossing. My favorite definitely has to be the NES collectibles that you get through the lottery at the Nook store. There's even some that you can't even get legitimately so you have to use a cheat device. Everything in this game just seems so happy. But there is one easter egg in this game that is actually pretty freaky. And I'm not even talking about the fact that I got a horse neighbor named Elmer. Yeah... I guess we know where he's gonna end up. E even though- even though that's- that's made of cow stuff. Like milk has a cow on the- on Without spoiling the easter egg quite yet, here's what you have to do. For this trick to work, you're gonna need another memory card with a second town on it that you can visit. Head over to the train station and board the train to the second town. The game will then dump some traveling data onto the other card. Once you board the train, you need to actually reset your game. Boop. Once you come back, you'll be greeted by a villager from your town that has to restore your save data. This is actually the indication that the easter egg is about to work. And if you've gotten Mr. Rossetti like I have here, you've done it wrong. Restore your save data and get into the game. You'll notice something is a bit... off. Because your face is now actually missing. Not only that, but you've lost all of your belongings in Bells. The implications of this actually go a little bit further, because your face actually resembles a gyroid. And gyroids in themselves are themed after Japanese Hanawa. 
which are clay figurines that are buried with the dead. And it doesn't take much to speculate now that your character might actually be dead. Back in 2004, Half-Life 2 revolutionized the first-person shooter. Whoa, physics! Whoa, physics! Let's play some fetch, dog! Whoopsies. Now, there's a lot of secrets in this game, but most of the time it comes down to hidden areas where you can just find ammo and health. But in my opinion, that's not necessarily very scary. There are, however, some really creepy secrets in this game, and you have to be paying really close attention to even realize they're there. Like, did you know G-Man actually follows you throughout the game? You can only see him in quick little glimpses, but he's there. He often comes up in places you wouldn't expect him to be, where there's lots of action going on. He always seems to be just watching you- oh crap. Wait, hold on. I gotta- wait. He always seems to be just watching you. Okay, bye. As creepy as that could possibly be, it's very easy to miss. You could just not be paying attention at all and not even know this exists. However, there is an easter egg in this game that I find creepier than the G-Man just following you around. The thing is though, you've heard it probably. Well, let me rephrase that. You haven't heard it the right way. During the creepiest section of the game Ravenholm, there's a priest character who sets up a lot of traps for the zombies. The type of trap you're looking for is a fire trap, so lead a couple zombies to a fire trap and you'll actually get the easter egg. Like I said, you've probably heard this before, but not in the right way. You actually have to reverse the footage and you'll hear one of the creepiest things. What? I saw you knock it over. I ain't picking that up. You know, you know, you pick it up. You pick it up. Okay, okay, I'll pick it up. You know what? I'm a rebel though, so <clears throat> even the game agrees I'm defiant. Hey guys, thanks a lot for sticking it out till the end of the video, I really appreciate it. If you like the video and you want to see more videos like these, click that subscribe and like button. And if you want to stay up to date on anything that's going on, go ahead and follow my Twitter and Facebook. I want to give some special shout out thanks to some Patreon supporters. Special thanks to Harry Gaynor, Juan Holguin, and Caleb Curran. And if that video void has not been filled just quite yet, I have two more countdown videos for you. The top 10 games for the end of the world and the top 10 cheat codes in video games. Also, don't forget to check out HiddenBlock.com for other great content creators. And if you're watching this on Halloween, happy Halloween to you. I hope you stay safe and eat lots of candy. And of course, my opinion is not the only opinion, so if you have some creepy Easter eggs, why not share them in the comments down below? That's all I got for you, so you should do those things that I just said. I'm giving you time. Go ahead.